I've been listening in on everyone's videos this week. So I know y'all are feeling it. Um, just <laughs> wild energy. Wild energy. Um, during the day, uh, it started rolling in for me, I, I think, about four days ago, and I have just been downed. Um, super dizzy. Constant. Not on and off. Constant. Um, it's affecting my uh, daytime vision. It's, my vision has just uh, gone blurry. That usually happens when the energies are trying to tell me to not focus too much on this um, reality. Uh, they're trying to draw my attention in a bit. Uh, and by the way, when I go in a bit, this reality is still here. It's just uh, uh, paid attention to in a, in a slightly different way where there is uh, uh, more going on than just this. But uh, yeah, just endless for days now. Uh, in the night, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure how I'm going to express this, but um, or or if I want to, but but here it comes. It's uh, it's not staying back. I, I was going to hold this one back, but in the night the other night, my God, uh, mm, the Kundalini energy <laughs> was <laughs> was. Uh, uh, wild, just just wild, um, uh, intense, high energy, wild, uh, just uh, coming out of multiple orifices. <laughs> I was uh, uh, experiencing this as serpent energy, which Kundalini is often known for. Uh, the sensation of this just felt like serpents extending out of many of my orifices. <laughs> um, it was clear to me, you know, as, as I mm, pondered on this the following day, that uh, these were releases, and not just releases, but clean releases. I, I won't go into uh, much of the details about how I visioned this uh, in visionscapes in the night, I'll just say that they were rather orgiastic in nature and um, just wild, just wild, e very easily. I think the reason that I want to bring this up is because these things are so easily misinterpreted. Um, and staying in communication with many of you this week, I'm, I'm hearing from multiple people about um, uh, uh, intense daytime situations, but also nightmarish events in the night. Um, and and th this is just more of the, the high energy, you know, being experienced and being interpreted in multiple ways. Um, but it's important to stay clear. It's important to stay clear and to transmute anything that feels nightmarish, uh, heavy, low vibrational, icky. Um, it's important to transmute all of this. This is what we're doing. <laughs> uh, this is why we're, we're feeling these energies and experiencing these things the way that we are, to transmute them. Um, so this sort of brings me into... Uh, a bit of a question that, that was coming in a lot some time back, uh, but that also is very fitting for right now. And so uh, I'll just mention that um, regarding the awakening, there um, there is an individual awakening occurring with each one of us. and. This individual awakening has its own set of specific details associated with it. Um, and then there's also the collective awakening that's occurring. And it has its another set of, of details that's associated with it. Now, within the um, individual and collective awakening of humanity as a whole, 
it's just my personal um, suspect that um, every aspect of the awakening, of the shift, um, needs to be felt, uh, needs to be experienced on a conscious level in order for it to be perceived as real, just like anything else you experience or not experience. People hear of these spiritual experiences, but they're not having them themselves, and so to them they're not real real, you see. So everything has to be felt and experienced on a conscious level in order for it to be real. And many of you um, have signed on, volunteered to feel what I call the K energies, the Kundalini energies, the tangible energies through your physical body systems. Um, and those of you who have, have, have done this because you can. Okay, because you can, and you are feeling and experiencing these things f for the whole. And so um, there are so many who cannot tolerate um, the physical body stuff that happens. And, um, and so you who are, are running a, a lot of energy um, and... I sort of wanted to go off in another direction there, and the energies don't want me to, and so, <laughs> so I'm having a moment. Um, you are doing this for the whole. Uh, it, again, it's really, really uh, important. that you perceive this, uh, these tangible energy sensations as well as you are possibly able uh, to vision them, envision them, picture them out, um, you know, into the new reality situation as well as you're able. Um, I know that not everybody will understand what you're experiencing and what you're feeling. Some people will tend to think uh, you're sick or um, perhaps mentally <laughs> balanced. <laughs> um, and my apologies for my giggle there. Uh, it's just been insinuated uh, to myself so many times. Um, But again, it's important <clears throat> that you understand that you volunteered for this. It's important that you understand that you volunteered for it because it's something that you could do. And knowing this, it's again important to vision the physical body energy sensations well. Vision them from nightmare into dream. Your fondest dream. It's really easy to um, Get into the mindset and begin to feel to release these energies rather than learn to run them. This also has to be resisted. Uh, I know the high energies are not easy to handle physically through the physical body system. Um, but in order to um, uh, break the um, collective consciousness of humanity out of the um, experience set 
it knows right now the energy has to be run because only when the energy is run does the energy rise <laughs> and only with the new uh, higher uh, we'll say vibrational energy uh, is a new experience set a new set of experiences possible and we need to bring in the new set of experiences so that communication, for instance, doesn't stay uh, via um, a, a computer or telephone or whatnot, so that we're able to use telepathy, for instance, instead. Okay, so that is a new experience set, and it's something that we can only bring in if we raise the energy. And the energy will only rise if you can run it rather than release it, because when you release it, you come right back down to your um, everyday norm. When you learn to run it, you're raised up out of your everyday norm, and you're raised into a new set of experiences. This is how we're able to OBE, come lucid in our dreams. Um, experience clairvoyancy, clairaudiency, uh, telepathy, uh, teleportation, all of this. Okay, so um, if any of you are interested, I can maybe do a video about um, ideas for uh, running, learning to run the energy rather than release it. Um, I've actually tried that before in the past, and I haven't been able to do it. So somebody will have to write in with interest detailing your question and exactly what you want to know for me to be able to do this. I'm unable to do it on my own. Okay, and then uh, there's others of you who are wanting to be feeling these things, who have written in, who have again asked uh, how to bring the conscious awareness in on the wave of these energies. And so, um, boy... Uh, I've said this before, but I'm saying it new as though for the first time right now. <laughs> Physically, these are things that will uh, um, change the physical body system uh, enough that your consciousness may be able to tolerate being aware of these energies. Water, right at the top of the list, gang. As always, lots of water. Drink at least a gallon of water a day, if not two gallons. And depending on your size, more. Okay, so a lot of water. Uh, not that much liquid. More liquids. But a gallon to two gallons of just pure water. Okay, and then if you, if you, you know, drink tea or smoothies or anything else that's liquid, that would be on top of that. So lots and lots of liquids. The water is what helps the energy run, and when the energy is running more smoothly, it's more easy for the consciousness to come in on it because it doesn't hurt. Well, you know, not bad, or um, at least your consciousness will be able to come in on it for a bit. Um... Stay away, stay absolutely away from coffee, nicotine, uh, refined sugar, alcohol, out, out, just stay away from them completely. Um, if you're already in, in, engaged with, with these things, it will take weeks, you know, for you uh, no longer uh, um, employing them for multiple reasons, <laughs> uh, for, a, for a change to occur. But if you stay with it, um, much easier, again, uh, to stay awake. The refined sugar puts you to sleep. The stimulants, they give you a high, but then they put you to sleep. So all of these things, uh, you know, are just what, what makes the conscious awareness uh, fizzle out. And so, again, stay away from them. Eat light. Uh, eat organic. Um, stop eating three to four hours before going to bed at night. Wait a few hours before eating in the morning. Uh, take liquids, of course. Water. Um, coconut water. Get your electrolytes. Um, phytonutrients, things like that. But to eat anything, you know, solid or heavier, wait a few hours. Uh, nobody's going to like hearing this one. 
but limit your sexual activity. Again, something that for most people, after the event, puts them out, puts you to sleep. Okay, so basically what you're trying to do is just stay away from activities that are going to in, in, induce sleep or unconsciousness.